The long wait is finally over. Rundown 8 is upon us, which means we've got one last batch of levels to complete. Gather your squad, prepare your loadouts, and equip those boosters as we drop down once more to not only complete the mission, but to save the remaining bit of humanity. Hello everyone, Professor Scala here, and welcome to the R8A1 level guide. Just like always, we're going to be starting off with your loadout, and since it is the first level of the rundown, we're just going to be going with the old reliable, bio tracker, mine deployer, seafoam launcher, and then any sentry of your choice. No real rhyme or reason to this loadout, it's just a classic one I always like to take in with me whenever I go into a level for the very first time. BioTracker is there to provide you and your teammates information on enemies' locations, and also the capability to tag them when they are awake. Mines and Seafoam, you can utilize these for the alarms in the level to just shut doors, reinforce them with Seafoam, place a mine down on them to blow up pretty much every single enemy all at once once the door actually does break open, and then the sentry is there to just give you a little bit of extra firepower during either the alarms, or if you happen to wake up a room with a fair amount of enemies in it, fall back a little bit, and there's no door you can use nearby with mines or Seafoam, just place down your sentry at a good holding out position and deal with the enemies as they come to you. By all means, if you want to swap out this loadout a little bit, then go on ahead. It is the first level of the rundown, so it's not going to be all that difficult to complete in the first place. Dropping down into the level, you'll see that your main objective is to secure the Matter Wave Projector, which is always going to be located inside of Zone 73. Meanwhile, you and your teammates will be starting off inside of Zone 67. In here, not really a whole lot to it, no enemies to deal with whatsoever, no resources to collect, but you will get a little bit of dialogue from Schaefer as you make your way through it. And as you make your way through, eventually you'll find at the far northern end the security door to Zone 68, which is just going to have a full team scan tied to it. When it comes to Zone 68 itself, there will be no resources in here for you to collect, but there will be a few regular strikers and shooters to deal with, so have fun picking them off one by one. At the far northern end of the zone, you'll find a security door to Zone 70. This door is just also going to have a full team scan tied to it, and Zone 70 itself is basically the same thing. There'll be more enemies for you to deal with, this time though there are resources to collect, so keep an eye out for those boxes and lockers. And at the far northern end of it, you'll find a security door to zone 71, which will have a class 2 alarm tied to it. And as you can see with this map overlay, there's only one possible small location for these enemies, and there are two different doors that lead directly into your room. So what I like to do, since it is only a class 2 alarm and you could pretty quickly complete it, is just have both of the doors shut, place a mine on each of them, and that's really it. You don't need to use foam whatsoever, you do not need to place down your sentry, although by all means feel free to place it down as it can help you out. And once everything is set up, activate the alarm, work on the scans, and once everything has been completed, just deal with the enemies who are still left alive, and once everything has been killed off, you can then go back to the door and activate the checkpoint scan that's tied to it. Once that scan is completed, it will then automatically open up the door. As for Zone 71 itself, not a whole lot to this zone. There are three different security doors in the second room. However, we only have access to one of them, and that is the northern door to Zone 72. This door, though, is going to have a Class 3 diminished alarm tied to it, and as you can see with this map overlay, once again, there's only one possible spawn location for these enemies, and again, there are two different doors they could potentially take to get into our room. So what I like to do is shut both of those doors, mine them and sea foam them, and then I'll just place my sentry somewhere in the room. The exact positioning can vary quite a bit depending on just what type of sentry you brought in with you. So set up everything how you need to, activate the alarm, same thing as before, work on the scans, and once all the scans are completed, just go out and deal with any enemies who are still left alive, and once everything is dead, you can then head into zone 72. Now inside zone 72 there will be a fair amount of enemies both small regular strikers and shooters as well as a few giant strikers here and there but the only real important thing you need in here would be that colored key card. Of course there are resources for you to collect but if you want to play it stealthily by all means you can you don't have to actually kill any of the enemies. Once you get that key card, you can then backtrack out of this area back into zone 71, then go to the eastern side where you find the security door to zone 73, plug your key card into it, and then just do the full team scan that's tied to the door. As for zone 73, just a small zone, nothing in here, no enemies or resources, it's just simply going to be the matter wave projector in the far back room. Once you go over to it and you pick it up though, you are then going to be teleported out into a different dimension, where it's pretty much the same room, however there's no door out of it, and there's going to be a lot of corpses and blood all over the room. 
You don't need to do anything special out here though. Shortly after you have been teleported out into this area, you will then be teleported back into the room where you picked up the Matterway projector from. And then you're gonna get some more dialogue from Schaefer telling you to go back into zone 71 and then go to the western side where you'll find an orange shuttle box. Once you get there, plug the Matterway projector into it and that will unlock the security door right next to you. However, the security door itself, zone 74, is gonna have an error alarm tied to it. This error alarm will spawn in two regular strikers or shooters roughly every 10 seconds for the rest of the level. So once you and your teammates are good to go, activate the door, do the scan that's tied to it, then open it up immediately and just start running straight west. You'll make your way through a few different rooms, but as you get into all of them, you just go to the southwestern corner of it where you'll find the security door to zone 75. This door is just going to simply have a full team scan tied to it. And once you make your way in here, you're just going to continue to follow the trail a little bit until you eventually make it to the very last room of the level where you'll be able to find your extraction scan. Now, this scan does take a little bit of time to complete, not all that lengthy, but it's not going to be a super quick one. So while you're making your way here, feel free to shut the doors behind you, maybe even reinforce them with sea foam and mines just to deal with the enemies as they pile up on them. And once you get to the extraction scan, place down your sentry and get ready to hold out for a little bit as it's going to initiate an additional alarm which will spawn in a few more enemies per wave. But assuming you make it here in one piece, you just simply have to hold out for a little bit and once you get that scan to 100%, you are done and have completed R8A1. And that's all there is to it. R8A1 starts the final rundown on a fairly good note in my opinion. From Schaefer briefly explaining our ultimate goal, to the weird mirror room, to the end with the matter wave teleportation, I am already absorbed into Rundown 8 and all the surprises that will come with it. There are still plenty of levels to complete, but hopefully the long wait will have been worth it once we finally see everything that Rundown 8 has to offer. As always though, thank you for watching this video all the way to the very end. I do hope that it was able to provide you with some assistance in beating this level. If you have any tips or tricks this level that you want to share, any questions for me, or you just have something in general that you'd like to say, please do let me know down in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me, and if you want to join my community, there's a link to my discord down in the description, as well as some other links you might be interested in. Among those links being one to the official GTFO merch store, which, as always, I highly recommend you check out if you're a fellow GTFO enthusiast and you're looking to pick up some sweet merch. Until next time, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on Rundown 8 are so far, but please try not to spoil anything major for me or for the others, and hopefully, I'll see all you wonderful people in the next video.